What up dude bros, I'm Frank. This is a group review of a few new Elite 2.0 blasters. The Trailblazer, a spring-powered hammer action eight-shot cylinder-fed blaster. The Prospect, a four-shot smart AR spring-powered blaster. And the Tetrad, a spring-powered pump action four-shot smart AR system blaster. Group review of all three blasters, let's get into it. External overview of each blaster one by one. Starting out with the Trailblazer. Starting up front, there's no in-strike barrel lug. Up top, we have a front iron sight with no rear corresponding sight and no in-strike tactical rail on the top of the blaster, but we have attack rail on the bottom. We totally have the space for attack rail on top. Not sure why they didn't give us one. Now to the cylinder. The capacity of this blaster is eight darts. The right-hand side is pretty closed off. You can load in one dart right here if you're willing to bend the dart a little. The left-hand side is more open. It has three exposed barrels, so you can reload the eight-shot cylinder fairly quickly. The cylinder is set in place. It doesn't pop out of the blaster like on a strong arm, but you can manually rotate the cylinder freely to get around to all the barrels to load it up fairly quickly. And it's impressive that they got an eight shot capacity given the width of the blaster. The total width of the blaster is similar to the strong arm in the disruptor, which only holds six darts. They achieve this by pushing the barrels really close together relative to the disruptor and the strong arm. It doesn't seem like much, but there is a small gap between every barrel here. Add six of those together and it makes it thicker. The Trailblazer's barrels are super close together, so you have a fairly high capacity of eight darts without extra width. Moving on, this blaster is hammer action to prime the blaster. You pull down like that. It feels very similar to the Hammer Shot and other Nerf brand Hammer Action Blasters. Hammer Action's great because you can prime and fire this completely one-handed. You don't need your offhand to rack a slide or pull back a handle. So you can dual wield, hold a flag, or do something with your offhand as you're shooting with one hand, which is very cool. Moving down to the trigger, the trigger pull is pretty standard. This blaster does not have slam fire. Now down to the grip. This grip is definitely smaller than average. It's a very thin, very narrow grip, but it's not small in a cramping way, and there's ample space in the trigger guard for longer fingers. It's not ideal, but it's not uncomfortable. There's a difference there. But no sling or lanyard mount at the bottom of the grip. That is an external overview of the Trailblazer. Now to the Prospect. Starting up at the front, no in-strike barrel lug. This blaster features a four-barrel smart AR system, which you front load very simply. This blaster fires one at a time. It's not a shotgun. It starts at the top and then moves down. And just like many other smart air restrictor systems, the bottom barrel shoots a little bit slower than the top three. Up on the top of the blaster, we have a scope. This is permanently built into the blaster. This is not an in-strike attachment. This is not removable. And this scope doesn't have plastic lenses or anything obstructing the view. It's just a basic plastic tube. There's no crosshair or anything at all. It's just like you're looking through a little plastic tube. Down to the trigger, the trigger pull is pretty standard. This blaster does not have slam fire. In the rear is the priming handle. There's a T-style priming handle to prime. You do that. Prime strength required is in line with other elite blasters on the market, and it's a pretty smooth prime. Now down to the grip. This is a much smaller than average grip. It's very narrow and very small. And because of the trigger setup, this blaster is a little bit more cramping if you have larger hands. It is notably smaller than the Quadrat grip, which is essentially the same blaster without a scope. So if you have medium to larger size hands, the Quadrat's going to be more comfortable than the Prospect. That being said, it's still a smooth fill and pretty ergonomic grip if you have normal to small hands. And at the bottom of the grip, we have a sling or lanyard mount right here. That is an external overview of the Prospect. Now, external overview on the Tetrad. Starting up at the front, there's no in-strike barrel lug. Up front, we have four front-loading barrels. This is also a smart air restrictor blaster that shoots one dart at a time. And just like most other smart AR systems, the bottom barrel doesn't shoot as hard as the top three. But loading this one is very simple. You front load just like any other front-loading blaster. Above the barrels is the front iron sight, which corresponds with the rear iron sight here. And in between the sights is an in-strike tack rail. So if you want to put on a red dot or a different optic, you totally can. Down below is the priming handle. This is a pump action blaster to prime. You do that. Prime strength required is very similar to other Nerf Elite blasters out on the market right now, and it's a pretty smooth prime. Now down to the trigger. The trigger pull is pretty standard. Surprisingly, this blaster does not have slam fire. And now down to the grip. This grip is also smaller than the Elite average. It's a little more narrow, but it's surprisingly comfortable, even for my large fingers. I think this blaster is perfectly manageable. And it's a pretty comfortable grip, especially if you have regular or smaller hands. And down below, we do have a sling or a lanyard mount right here. Moving back to the stock, this is a fixed in place, non-adjustable, non-removable stock, which is a bit of a bummer because it looks like they molded in plastic to have some sort of side folding system, this blaster would be kind of perfect for that design. Maybe if it were modulus, it would have a side folding stock, but Elite 2.0, cutting cost corners, nah. Had an opportunity to be cool, but now it's just an oversized quadrat. Awesome. Way to go, Hasbro. Have I been ripping into them too much lately? No, they flip and deserve it. <laughs> Moving on, there's a sling mount down here as well. That is an external overview of the Prospect. Now I'll show you each of the three blasters firing. Trailblazer on Nerf Elite Darts. Handed shooting.
prospect shooting Nerf Elite darts. Tetrad shooting Nerf Elite darts. Operating these blasters went exactly as expected. I did not experience any jams and malfunctions with any of them. And to compare these blasters to others, I put them up on my chronograph. The Trailblazer achieved an average velocity of 69 giggity feet per second shooting Nerf Elite darts. The Prospect's muzzle velocity was 68 feet per second. And the Tetrad chronoed at 63 feet per second. This was mostly because the bottom barrel was really, really bad. The top three barrels were shooting over 73 feet per second pretty consistently. But this is an average of 12 shots shot through all four barrels. But that's not terribly uncommon with these smart air restrictor systems. Usually the bottom barrel doesn't shoot shoot as good as the top two. That is the objective information I can provide on these three blasters, now to my personal opinion, one by one. First, the Trailblazer. My opinion on this blaster is pretty high. It seems like a nice alternative to the hammer shot. It has an eight shot capacity instead of five, smooth operation, pretty good performance. I think the grip is a little small and a little disproportionate to the rest of the blaster, but overall it's a pretty solid blaster. And I think the shell on the Trailblazer looks super cool. The lines are just very cool. This is going to receive paint jobs very, very well. I would have liked to see an in-strike tack rail on the top of the blaster, especially because it's hammer action. It's kind of annoying to put a scope on top of a strong arm because it interferes with the slide. This blaster would be perfect for a big old scope because it wouldn't interfere with the priming of the blaster. Not sure why they only gave us a tack rail on the bottom of the blaster and not on the top. Other than the tack rail, I would have liked to see a slightly thicker grip. This one's just a little bit too small and it seems a little disproportionate to the size of the whole front of the blaster. It works out fairly okay though, especially given the larger trigger guard. It doesn't feel cramping like a lot of the Doomlands blasters. It's smaller, but it doesn't make it super uncomfortable for a big hand. So overall, pretty high opinion on the Trailblazer. Now to my personal opinion on the prospect. Overall, I think the blaster does what it's supposed to do. It's just too small for me to use personally. The grip is way smaller than average and it's a little cramping for my larger hand. Furthermore, this scope accomplishes nothing. I don't think it looks super cool and it makes it unholsterable, so it just doesn't fit my play style at all. It's not substantial enough to be like a standalone pistol like the Trailblazer kind of is. And since you can't fit it into a holster, you might as well just get a Trailblazer or another higher capacity blaster like it. And lastly, my opinion on the Tetrad. Overall, I'm a little underwhelmed by this blaster. It just seems like an oversized quad I think it would have been worthwhile had it had a folding or removable stock or slam fire, but it doesn't have either of those things, so it's just a really big quadrat with kind of small downsized ergonomics. But that's coming from me, and I'm a bit more critical and a bit more competitive. This blaster will be okay for someone who's smaller and younger who's just starting out in the hobby, because it is just essentially a large pistol, but it feels more substantial than that. And the pump action is smooth, it works well, and it shoots pretty okay. It's not going to win any Nerf Wars, but you can kind of tell that by looking at it. Now to the question, to buy or not to buy. I think you should buy the Trailblazer if you're looking for a hammer action blaster and you don't care if it fits into a holster. It has an eight shot capacity instead of the hammer shots five. It is bigger, it's a little less wieldy, but that kind of makes it cool. And I love the shell lines on the Trailblazer. It looks so cool. When people start painting these up, they're gonna look rad. Again, I think the grip is a little underwhelming, but maybe somebody will come out with a 3D printing grip that just like snaps on over top of it to make it a little bigger and beefier for people with big hands. Or you could just wrap some tape around the grip to make it a little thicker, I don't know. If it needs to go into a holster, I still think the hammer shot's a better pick. But finally, Nerf made something that isn't total crap. Way to go guys, it's been years. <laughs> To buy or not to buy on the Prospect. If you have regular or large size hands, I think the Quadrat's a better buy than the Prospect. But no jams or malfunctions and reasonable firing performance, so there's no objective reason to avoid purchasing this one if you think it looks really cool or something like that. And lastly, to buy or not to buy on the Tetrad. If you're just starting out or you're a non-competitive plinker, this blaster is pretty smooth to operate. Because it's a bigger size blaster with a small stock and a pump action, it feels more substantial than the Quadrat. Even if the effective firepower is essentially the same in the Quadrat and this blaster, this feels more like a substantial primary. And no jams or malfunctions or any objective reason to avoid purchasing this one. I'm just a little bummed it doesn't have slam fire and this stock is fixed. They really could have added something new to this series if this were a removable or like a side folding stock with pump action and slam fire. But in its current state, it feels just like a really big quadra. But that's just me being a performance based nerfer. This doesn't fulfill any need that I have. But again, no objective reason to avoid purchasing this one. So that's it for my group review of these three blasters. Hopefully I've laid out all the information you need to make an educated purchase decision. If you'd like to buy any of these, I'll put buy links in the description box below. That concludes this video review. Thanks so much for watching bros and as always stay tactical